everybody. Good morning and welcome back to the Adam Bergman Show. Today I am going to be talking about one of my favorite cryptocurrencies, the Hadara Hashgraph. HBAR, Hadara, Hashgraph, Hello Future, and you got the little dag over here. If you want some dope-ass gear, I do have a link down below, but I'm not here to show you my dope hoodies. I am here to talk about the Hadara Hashgraph. And in today's video, I will be doing three things. I will be talking about the general price of Hadara and the outlook that I have when it comes to Hadara. I will be talking about two massive hires that the Hadara hash grab did make over the last month. And I will be talking about a ridiculously easy to use brand new NFT marketplace and NFT minter. This NFT minter is probably the easiest NFT minter that I've ever seen. And it's built specifically for two types of NFT users or NFT makers. The technical and non-technical, you heard that correctly. You can either be super, super technical when it comes to NFTs, or you could be super, super basic. And they basically take the NFT website and they make it as easy to use as if you were doing it from a mobile app. And as always, just sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of this video. Let's dive right into it. So the entire crypto market as a whole is actually up 1.37%. We're now at $811 billion. And over the last 24 hours, we had around $30 billion worth of volume, which is an increase of around 15%. Of the total volume, only $1.5 billion is actually DeFi, which is only around 5%. As I said, time and time again, 90 plus percent, overwhelmingly, all of the cryptocurrency volume comes not from DeFi, but from central exchanges. So I know a lot of people hate on central exchanges, but at the end of the day, central exchanges are very much needed. It's a double-edged sword. Central exchanges, for all intents and purposes, are not bad. It's the people that control the central exchanges that do bad things in the name of cryptocurrency, but using old school schemes and embezzlement using crypto instead of fiat. And that's the problem right now with central exchanges. But with that said, if you go down to Hadara Hashgraph, it's now sitting at actually spot number 35. It was as high as spot 38, 39, I remember. It went down to like spot 37, 36. I have not seen Hadara Hashgraph at 35 for quite a while. As a matter of fact, I've been doing Hadara videos probably for the last six months. And I honestly don't remember that the price has been so high. Now, let me re phrase what I just said. I don't mean so high as in the price is high because the price is obviously shit like the rest of the crypto market. However, it's all about moving up or down in the rankings when it comes to coin market cap. If you outperform the market, this is a good thing, whether it's a bull market or whether it's a bear market. And right now, Hadara is doing pretty good compared to the rest of the market. As you can see right here, Hadara is only down 0.5% for the entire week which is absolutely massive because a lot of projects got absolutely shellacked when it comes to cryptocurrency. I just wanted to point out something over here. Hadara's total circulating supply is at 25 billion. The maximum circulating supply of Hadara is going to be 50 billion total. A lot of people ask me, hey, Adam, what's the best thing scheduled? When is the HBAR Foundation going to release all of the Hadara? To be honest, I don't know. I'm doing the research myself. I don't have that information in front of me, but hopefully at one point in time, I will be getting you that information. What does Hadara actually do with all of this HBAR that it releases into society, releases into the ecosystem? There's two main things that I know of. There's a lot of things, but there's two main things. Number one, Hadara Foundation, the HBAR Foundation, actually uses the Hadara HBAR that they sell, and they use it to fund a lot of different things, a lot of different programs. I made a video the other day about Dr. Lehman Baird, how he came on, and he says, hey, Hadara is super decentralized because we have so many different organizations within Hadara that try to push knowledge when it comes to cryptocurrency and the Hadara hash graph. One of them is the HBAR Foundation, and as you can see, they already allocated 360 million dollars 360 million dollars when it comes to funds allocated and they already granted 167 grants these grants are used to actually develop and build on the ecosystem of hadara with that said i want to show you some of the really cool things that have been built on hadara but before i do i want to show you two really strong hires that the hadara hashgraph team has made and hopefully this is going to propel the Hadara ecosystem into the future and allow us to build and move forward. So this actually happened earlier this month. It happened around two weeks ago. I did report on this when it first came out, but a lot of people didn't see the video. And I think this is very, very important information to have. 
So former government and finance leaders take up executive roles with Hadara. Brett McDowell, chair of Hadara, said, and I quote, over the past year or so, we've seen significant maturation of the Hadara ecosystem as more entities emerge and work independently to accelerate the development and utilization of Web3 capabilities uniquely enabled by the enterprise-operated Hadara network. This momentum is reflected in the quality of the new executive leaders who were attracted by the opportunity to collaborate with our council members and make meaningful contributions in an increasingly critical area of treasury governments and public policy engagement. Okay, treasury governance and public policy engagement. This is where I'm going with this. It's very important to understand where your funds are going. So treasury governance, treasury is your coffers, treasury is your pockets and the governance of where and what is gonna happen with that money. And remember that money is coming from where? Hadara. You're switching your H bars into fiat to fund a bunch of different things. Besides for that, you're funding development, but you're also funding the staking of Hadara. And if you want to know how to stake Hadara, just click on the link up above. I made a full video on this. It's a really easy to follow video where you can be getting six and a half percent returns on your Hadara H bar. If you're not trying to sell your Hadara and you're keeping it in the long run, why not make an extra six plus percent? returns by staking. It's super easy. You guys are definitely going to enjoy that video. And the second one is the public policy engagement. Very, very important to have. So they ended up hiring two people. Tech and foreign policy expert Nilimini Rubin joins Hedera as chief of staff and head of global policy as the council expands its focus to public policy engagement. Also joining the team is CFO, chief financial officer Betsabi Botares, global finance executive who has extensive expertise in finance strategy in both the distributed ledger technology space and TradFi. And then if you go a little bit lower, they're going to explain to you who these people are. Ruben was actually on global policy team for Meta, and they worked in many other various fields when it comes to cryptocurrency, so on and so forth. They actually were the director of international finance at the National Security Council, and a senior aide at both the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Really, really good hire. I like it. This is what's going to propel us moving forward. Now, Botatis is an internationally accomplished strategist and fintech executive with nearly two decades, bro. Two decades, almost 20 years of experience, ranging from large financial institutions to blockchain and cryptocurrency startups. This is a really, really good bridge of TradFi, traditional finance, and DeFi, decentralized finance. CFI, centralized finance, and DeFi, decentralized finance. Not all hires always work. Not everybody is a right fit. The Lego pieces don't always fit, but I'm super, super anxious and I'm super, super excited to see what Ruben and Botatis can bring to the Hedara Hashgraph team. I am an investor in Hedara Hashgraph. I don't hold too much cryptocurrencies. I sold out of a lot of cryptocurrencies. Hedara is one of the few projects that I actually bought into during this bear market. Because as I was doing more research, as I personally started, you know, digging deep, going down the rabbit hole of Hadara, I really do believe in Hello Future. Hadara does things differently. For example, they're not a blockchain. They're actually a DAG. They are a DLT. All blockchains are DLTs, but not all DLTs are blockchains. And Hadara uses something called a DAG, which stands for a directed cyclic graph. And if you didn't see it, it basically looks like this. So these are all of the transactions, right? And they use a protocol called gossip to gossip. And there is a bunch of nodes that are sending information and proving the DAG simultaneously in no particular order. And the Hadara Hashgraph system actually takes all of these proofs and then puts them in an order in the future. And that's how Hadara Hashgraph works at a very simplistic, basic explanation so that most people can have a grasp and understanding and visualization of how it works. And because they do that, they do things completely different than a blockchain. The blockchain is completely in order, right? It's a block that's chained together. You have a piece of information, chain, piece of information, chain, piece of information, chain. Now, what are in all of these orbs of a DAG directly to Sigma Graph? What is in all of the blocks of a blockchain? You have certain type of information. You have your transaction code. You have who's being sent what, from who is sending to that, the amount that's being sent, the data that's being sent, and the timestamp that is being sent. Sometimes it's plus or minus, but that's the general information that goes into all of these things. And that's why it's very, very important to be able to be 
fast, transparent, efficient, both cost efficient and energy efficient. And the Hadara hash graph gives you all of that. Let me show you. This is the website for Hadara hash graph. If you go all the way to the bottom, they're going to actually give you the statistics. Currently, we have 922,000 transactions per day. The finality is 5.5 seconds. The number of accounts on mainnet is 1.3 million. And the API calls is 437 per H bar. If you go a little bit up, then you're going to see some more statistics. Very, very important. Transactions per second is 10,000 plus. Right now, we're limited at 10,000. I'm using the wrong word, limited. We can increase 10,000 transactions to several hundred thousand transactions, and then we can, in theory, keep going higher and higher once we start using sharding and a little bit of a fancier ways to increase the speed. But right now, 10,000 is more than enough because we're only really getting around 10, 15 transactions per second. The, the cost of using Hadara, 0. 0.0001. That's why a lot of people say that Hadara is the commercial grade DAG, the commercial grade DLT, because the price is consistent. We know that if you have a billion dollars that you're sending, you're spending 0.0001 USD. If you're sending $1, you're spending 0.0001 USD. The price is always consistent. And if Hadara's price goes up from four cents to four hundred dollars, you're still paying a fraction of a a fraction of a fiat dollar, not a fraction of a Hadara H bar. It's very very important, and that's the way that they model their consensus system. Final word on the DAG versus a blockchain. Hadara did have a HIP, which is a Hadara improvement proposal, and that HIP essentially what happens: most APIs, most plugins, most developers, most everything when it comes to cryptocurrency is used to a blockchain. So a lot of people cannot read the way a DAG works. So there's a HIP Hadara impro improvement proposal that even though the gossip to gossip works, like I explained, they end up converting it to a system that looks like a blockchain, and they make the information into a blockchain. It's not a blockchain but they make it readable in the form of a blockchain so that there's interoperability with other DLTs that might not happen to be a DAG because there's only like 1% of cryptocurrency is DAG. With that said, let me show you some really, really cool upgrades when it came to the Hadara hash graph. But before I do, can I please ask you for a Hanukkah present? Guys, please, I need you to decimate, discombobulate, destroy, and absolutely search out and literally chokehold it, kill that mofo like button. I need two things to happen when you hit that like button so freaking hard. I need YouTube to call me and be like, yo, Adam Bergman, your subscribers are hitting that like button so freaking hard that we have to charge you because they broke the like button for the rest of YouTube. And number two, I need that guy, Grand Stefan, to call me. He loves the like button. And if we smash the like button, destroy it, discombobulate it, he's gonna get very mad. So make sure that Graham calls me and make sure that YouTube calls me and hit that freaking like button. Guys, this is Hadara NFT Minter, okay? It's called mintbar.xyz. This is a really, 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 really cool thing that's on Hadara. Introducing Mintbar XYZ. I'm gonna show you how to use this. An open source NFT Minter for Hadara. Good morning, H Barbarians. Some time ago, I was asked to build an open source tooling to accelerate the adoption of Hadara NFT's ecosystem. I figured that since our NFT meta metadata is now interoperable and aligned with industry standards, which is the HIP 412, so that's a specific type of NFT, it was time to build an NFT minting web app to enable both technical and non-technical creators the ability to quickly, easily, and inexpensively mint NFTs. I'm going to take you through this right now. It's so dope. On the Hadara right away. Before we start building, I want to say a few guiding principles for the goal of the project. Open source, trustless, integrates with the community wallets, mints NFTs using the Hadara token services, and enforces the HIP 4.1.12 metadata standards to your NFT is supported by all major marketplaces and utilizes IPFS for secure long-term storage. If you don't know what IPF stands for, the IPFS stands for their in their planetary file system. 
And it's a way to store information on a blockchain. I made a video about this before. If you guys want a video on interplanetary file system when it comes to cryptocurrency and data storages and how it's mined and how it's retrieved through miners, let me know and I'll be happy to make you a full video on that. Now, instead of going through this, I'm just gonna read you one more statement then I'm gonna actually show you how to use it. This was made for two types of people, technical and open source Hedera NFT Minter and Gallery app to save you development time and non-technical, which is what I'm really, really gonna showcase right now. Non-technical, an easy trustless app for non-technical users to mint new fully featured NFT and any NFT collections. Let me show you how this works. This is Mint Bar XYZ. They give you two options right here on the left, new collection or existing collection. I'm gonna worry about new collection. And it's very interesting because it says fastest, easiest, most sustainable. I must agree with him right now. Seriously, it's pretty, pretty dope. Click on new collection. They're going to ask you how many you want to mint. You can mint up to 10. Let's say you want to change this from one to five. Okay. Then you're going to press next. When you press next, you would upload a NFT image right here. I don't want to upload anything because I don't want to see, I don't want to show you guys my uh, internal gallery of everything I have on my iPad, but it's very, very simple. And then you put in all of this information. So let's say collection name is going to be Adam Bergman. Collection symbol is going to be Y. And then NFT name, hello. Okay. And after hello, NFT description, this is awesome. Okay. And finally, it's going to say NFT creator, the Berg. Very simple. It literally took me what? One minute. Press next. And then it's going to ask you trade color, value, label, value. Very, very simple. Attributes, what color you want to make and the value of it. Properties, give it a label and give it a value. Then press next. When you press next, they want to say, Click the plus to add royalties to collection. Do you want to have royalties or not? What does royalties mean? If you sell an NFT and somebody resells it, they get all the money. But if you add royalties to it, that means that you get a piece of all sales in the future. Really, really, really cool. Press next. And then they ask you for features. You can control the supply, the administration, the freeze, the wipe, the pause, the fee schedule. If you press supply, the supply key can change the total supply of any NFT within a collection and must be set to mint additional NFTs. The administrative. The admin key can be used to delete an entire NFT collection. The freeze. The freeze key can be used to freeze an account for NFT transfers. The wipe. The wipe key can be used to delete all NFTs within the collection for a specific account. The pause key has the authority to pause and unpause any NFT collection. Pausing an NFT collection prevents all transfers of the NFT within the collection. And finally, we have the fee schedule. A fee schedule has the ability to change the collection's royalty fees after it has been minted. Changing the royalty fees of a collection will impact all NFTs within the collection. Fix royalties and fallback. And then you just press mint it. When you press mint it, this is what it's going to look like. You would actually mint the photo. Adam Bergman, collection symbol Y, hello, the Berg, this is awesome. And then they're giving you all of the options that you put before. And then you would just press mint it. Okay, then it says, remember, minting is immutable, so on and so forth. Guys, at the end of the day, this is a really, really cool option to have. I really, really appreciate that this is available. That NFT minter is super, super dope. I thoroughly enjoy using it. And it makes your life so much simpler. You can mint up to 10,000 NFTs in the collection, but only 10 at a time. So this is really, really, truly for the novices, the new people that are using NFTs. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. I think the future for Hadara is bright. I think they're doing the right things. I also believe that Hadara never had its bull run yet. If you've noticed, I like to invest in cryptocurrencies that have not had their bull run yet. Do I think Hadara will have a bull run? Yes. Do I think Hadara is strong in many aspects? Yes. Do I see weaknesses? Yes. The weaknesses is the marketing and public relations. Hadara, like a lot of other cryptocurrencies that I invest in, happen to not have great rah-rah, sis-boomba type visualization and just people don't know them as good. But I think that within time, this is gonna be fixed and they do have a lot of partnerships, right? I'm just being fair. Um, for example, when you talk about cryptocurrency, what comes to mind? 
Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Polygon, BNB, uh, Solana, right? Those are the ones that come to mind off the top of my head. Hadara is not a household name yet, but as long as they're developing and they're really at the beginning stages of developing, right? They just starting. They just launched a few DEXs. They're launching a shit ton of uh, dApps. They're doing a lot of funding right now. They have this really cool application right here that I showed you. And this is just one example. So in the future, I do believe that Hedera has a great potential to become a top 30, a top 20, a top 10 cryptocurrency. In terms of pure skills, in terms of pure um, accolades, in terms of pure technology, Hedera is up there with the best of them, with the best of them. It's just a matter of having people understand what Hedera could do. So I have high hopes for Hedera in the future, and this is why I make these videos. And if you like more videos like this, I suggest that you click on this video right here. It's a really, really cool video that you're going to enjoy about the Hedera hash graph. Thank you and have a great day.